Well, friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. I want to welcome you to this online service of worship for Riverside United Church for March 21st, 2021. My name is Dave Exley. I'm the lead minister for Riverside. And I hope, above all else, that in the midst of this service, as you receive this, no matter when you're receiving it, whether it's on a Sunday morning when we release this, or, or later on in the day, or sometime later in the week, or maybe sometime in the future, I hope, through the words that you hear, the songs that we sing, you get a sense of that love of God that is there to, to wash over all creation, to give us a sense of hope for the future. For Lent is a season where we pay close attention to that voice of God. The noises of this world can often get in the way of us hearing that voice, but I hope through the words that we share in this service, through the songs that we sing, that you'll hear that voice loud and clear. As I've mentioned in past services, in the absence of being able to pass the plate in person on Sunday mornings, I'd encourage you to go onto our website to riverside.on.ca and make an online contribution to our ministry to help support us into the future. We don't know the Sunday that we'll be back in person and when we'll be reopening our doors and able to offer programs throughout the week. Uh, but we know that, uh, that that will happen at some point and we hope that we have a bright future in store for each and every one of us. Stay tuned for some announcements at the end of the service. We'll be sharing those with you, some important ones for our community of faith. But as we open our service today, we open it with the lighting of our Christ candle. Many thanks to, to Zach for bringing that light to our service today. And so let us open our service by lighting that Christ candle for us today. We light the Christ candle as a symbol of the light of Christ, which cannot be held back by distance, and which shines in all of us, no matter who, where we are.
Well, we continue our sermon series for the season of Lent, the power of sacrifice, as we continue to follow in the footsteps of Jesus, to, to listen to the words that we find written in the Gospels, and as they guide us toward that place where we, where we can understand how Jesus' living can transform our everyday living here today in our own lives. Uh, many thanks to, to Zach and to Linda for reading our scripture uh, today. It comes from John chapter 12. And so listen for these words and may they illuminate your living this Lenten season. A reading from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 20 to 33. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible. Some Greeks were among those who had come up to worship at the festival. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and made a request. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and Andrew and Philip told Jesus. Jesus replied, The time has come for the human one to be glorified. I assure you that unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it can only be a single seed. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their lives will lose them, and those who hate their lives in this world will keep them forever. Whoever serves me must follow me. Wherever I am, there my servant will also be. My Father will honor whoever serves me. Now I am deeply troubled. What should I say? Father, save me from this time. No, for this is the reason I have come to this time. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and, it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard and said, It's thunder. Others said, An angel spoke to him. Jesus replied, This voice wasn't for my benefit, but yours. Now is the time for judgment of this world. Now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from earth, I will draw everyone to me. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. And friends, let us pray. O oh, creative God, source of all beauty, you give light to the soul. Open our hearts as we listen for your word and open our minds as we dream with you. Reveal your life-giving truth that comforts and disturbs us through Jesus the Christ. Amen. Well, I can remember a few years ago being at a church that had a few of the words from the passage we just heard from John chapter 12 engraved in a plaque that resided on the church pulpit. Sir, we want to see Jesus. Read the plaque. Now, I have to admit that I, I chuckled just a little bit when I first saw the plaque, for the phrase is not exactly the one that would be my first choice to highlight when encouraging preachers to share the good news of Jesus. In particular, the, the sir that's attached to the beginning of the statement is a little troublesome, to say the least. But as I re-examine this, this message and what that sends to, to put that on one's pulpit within the context of a, a worshiping community, I must admit that there is a, a deep and profound message that I perhaps missed and that we could find embedded in those words from John chapter 12. So let's look a little bit more deeply at this passage. Well, this story comes right on the heels of, of two other very important stories that we find in the Gospel of John. The first of those stories that leads into this one is the raising of Lazarus from the dead. And the second is, is Jesus' entry into Jerusalem, that, that Palm Sunday processional that we will hear about next week when we get to Palm Sunday and move into Holy Week. But we're not there just yet. But this story follows those two stories. And so it's important to note that at this stage in the story, Jesus and the good news message that he offers to the world is under threat. The temple elite and the Roman authorities are watching him with a close eye. He comes with a message of, of peace, but that message is met with a hostile response. And so it's significant that the two men who approach Philip, one of Jesus' followers, the two men that approach him with the request, 
Sir, we want to see Jesus. It's important to note that they are foreigners. In all likelihood, they are Gentiles. In other words, people who are outside of the Jewish faith tradition, the one that Jesus called his own. The good news of, of Jesus at this point in the story has spread beyond the confines of his own people, his own tribe. We begin to see that Jesus' message of hope is not just intended for the few, but instead is meant to spill out beyond the boundaries that our tribal world, that our narrow-minded world, has worked far too long to protect. And so the question is this, what are the implications of that ever-expanding world for which Jesus longs to have us preach? What is the good news, the good news message that he offers for all the world, not just for the few? And so let's just set that aside for, for just a moment and look at another uh, thing that might enlighten us as we uh, enter into this story. In our Lenten book study uh, group meeting this week, we watched a, a short video featuring Richard Rohr, the author whose book we're reading during the season of Lent. And it's a video where, where Rohr talks about the problematic trend with, with many worshiping communities within our world, Christian worshiping communities in our world, and the language that is used in worship. For many evangelical churches, Rohr points out in this video, love to sing about God being victorious. But the great irony is that all these streams of Christianity, all these evangelical churches, they seem to be the ones that are proclaiming a God who is anything but victorious. Think about it. Who gets into heaven according to most of these communities of faith? Only a select few. Who does God love according to many of these so-called believers in Jesus? Not many. In other words, God is anything but victorious when you consider things through this narrow lens of fundamentalist Christianity. They might argue that, that God's victory will come at some future time, but, but any victory seems to be overshadowed by the condemnation and eternal judgment of a large number of people. And so, the question for us is this. Do the songs that we sing and the way that we characterize God fit with the definition that Jesus provides for us in the Gospels? When outsiders come to us and say, we want to see Jesus, what do we show them? Let's look at, at what Jesus sings, I suppose, to the, the faithful in this passage from John chapter 12. What does he sing to them? Well, the song he sings is, is a kind of victory song, but it's different from most victory songs. It is a song that rings out beyond the boundaries that we so often create when it comes to proclaiming God's favor and God's blessing as people of faith. While we're busy narrowing the goodness of God and, and often blaming God, rather than looking within when things go off the rails in our world, Jesus, Jesus does something different. He, he cries out for the walls of this world to be knocked down and the gates to be opened wide to God's goodness and God's mercy. Let there be no limit to that, he says with his life and his teaching. There's a moment in the text where, where we hear a voice from heaven, and it's a moment that brings the reader back to an earlier passage in John's Gospel narrative, the baptism of Jesus. It doesn't matter so much what, what the voice says in each of these passages. It's more important that we, we see this as a moment where God's realm suddenly emerges in the midst of our ordinary world. In both cases, in both stories. The voice from heaven is a voice that conveys a sense of, of blessing, a sense of love, a sense of inclusion. And of course, in the case of this morning's passage, the, the crowd, well, they misread the voice. It's almost comical the way in which they miss the point. Some of them say, oh, it's thunder that we heard. While others say, well, an angel spoke to him, him being Jesus. The people that, that are there that day, they, they just can't even hear the song that God desperately wants them to hear. 
Jesus, though, helps them to understand it. He says to them, This voice wasn't my, for my benefit, but was for yours. Now is the time for judgment of this world. Now this world's ruler will be thrown out. When I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to me, Jesus says. Well, we may find ourselves lost in one word within that section of the text, that word judgment. This is an incredibly hopeful statement from Jesus. He tells the people that the world's ruler will be thrown out. In other words, those rulers that are constantly at war with one another, those rulers that create boundaries, perpetuating that reality where there are insiders and outsiders, those rulers who fight over wealth and resources, those rulers will be tossed out and a new rule will begin. And what will that look like? Well, Jesus tells us, he says, I will draw everyone to me. Put another way, that voice from heaven that, that declared at Jesus' baptism, you are my beloved in you I find happiness. That voice, well, Jesus intends for all to hear that voice and to be blessed by the knowledge that, that, that God is not there as a judgmental God to, to say you're in and you're out, but instead God is a God who speaks those words to each and every one of us. You are my beloved. In you I find happiness. It might seem ridiculous to, uh, that the people around Jesus were unable to hear that voice from the heavens, but, but many of us, in fact, perhaps all of us, struggle to hear those divine voices within this world. For there are so many other voices and other noises that, that compete for space within our world, noises that can make it difficult for us to hear and to notice God's voice in the world. I've been fortunate. Uh, to work with some incredible people during my time of working in the church. And one such person that, that taught me a great deal about those competing noises in this world was the Reverend Dr. Howard Friend. It was while I was working as the, the director of Christian education for St. John's Presbyterian Church in Devon, Pennsylvania, that I, I had the chance to, to work with Howard Friend. Our lead minister was on sabbatical for, for the better part of this particular year. And Dr. Friend filled in as our interim minister during that time. In one conversation we had about uh, talking about the church and the work that we do, I'll never forget what Howard said. It was almost a, a throwaway comment, one that many people might forget. But it's a comment that was so strange that it stayed with me for the past two decades, and it's provided further illumination for me as to what it means to be followers in the ways of Christ and what it means to tune into God's voice within this world and tune out those other voices. For when talking about uh, his ministry, Howard said, I think maybe part of my job is to simply remind people to, to think twice when they hear the sound of their credit card hitting the retail counter. Now, it's important to note that, that we're, we were working together at that time at a very affluent church, so that factors into the conversation there, but it's not the only reason why we need to think about this, and I think we can have this be a comment that illuminates our thinking and our way of living as it relates to our following in the way of Christ. Those are profound words. Think about that statement. I know it may seem strange to say, and, and not just because we're beginning to shift our society uh, towards a tap type of payment rather than a set the credit card down on the retail counter, but to say that the job of the church is to have people be mindful of their participation in the consumeristic world we live in is a radical thing to say. It's one thing to show our devotion to God through, through the singing of glorious hymns on a Sunday morning, but it cannot end there. We need to learn to sing God's song and participate in God's hymns of love that are sung not just with our voices, but sung out through our day-to-day -day living. 
I think that's what Dr. Friend was trying to convey, a sense that, that we can make noises within this world in our everyday living that are counter to what God wants us to do, and we need to think twice. For God is, is only victorious in so much as we are willing to sacrifice our comfortable living so that all might live with the peace and blessing that Jesus was so committed to. Jesus shows us what it means to sacrifice for the sake of God's song. In fact, he believes so strongly in God's song and God's vision for the world that he's willing to risk his own life for the cause. He shows the kind of sacrificial bravery that we need to see more of in this world. For if he's willing to walk all the way to the cross, is it so much for us to, uh, to ask of us that we think twice before every purchase? Is this something that's going to, uh, to help in building God's kingdom and creating equality for all humankind? Or am I participating in something that's counter to that? We need to think twice. And is it so much to ask for that? And is it so much to ask for us to reconsider how we treat those around us in our day-to-day -day living? For all over the world, there are voices crying out, we want to see Jesus. People crying out, we want to see his dreams fulfilled. We want to see the kind of love that he showed in his life. We want to meet this all-loving, all-inclusive God who Jesus revealed to us through his living. We want to see people like him that sacrifice all that they have for a better future, for people they don't even know. We want to see an equal and just world. We want to see the light of the world shining from today into an even better tomorrow. In the story of Christ his passion narrative teaches us how to respond to those, those voices that we hear within the world making that request. We respond with the kind of sacrificial bravery that Jesus showed with his life. Theologian and biblical scholar and, and all around great guy, Walter Brueggemann, once wrote uh, these words in the form of a prayer, and I think they connect so well with what we're talking about and what Jesus came to proclaim through his living. For Dr. Brueggemann once wrote these words, these words of prayer. He said, On our own, we conclude there is not enough to go around. We're going to run short of money, of love, of members, of years, of, of life. We should seize the day, seize our goods, seize our neighbor's goods, because there is not enough to go around. And in the midst of our perceived deficit, you come. You come giving bread in the wilderness. You come giving uh, children at the 11th hour. You come giving homes to exiles. You come giving futures to the shut down. You come giving Easter joy to the dead you come, fleshed in Jesus. These are, are beautiful words that speak to that tension that exists within this world, that noise that seems to come from our world and those that pull us in the direction away from what God dreams of for this world, and those voices that draw us back to that place. Dr. Brueggemann concluded with these words in that prayer, and I think it can work as a mantra for us as we consider this season of Lent, who we're called to be and how we're called to sacrifice and what God wants from our living. Brueggemann writes these words, So God, by your giving, break our cycles of imagined scarcity. Override our presumed deficits. Quiet our anxieties of lack. Transform our perceptual field to see the abundance, mercy upon mercy, blessing upon blessing. What a gift it is to follow in the footsteps of Jesus this Lenten season, to follow the one who helps us to break our cycles of imagined scarcity, the one who is able to transform us and to help us see that great abundance that is in God's creation. And so may we, 
like those strangers, those foreigners who, who came to Philip and said, we want to see Jesus. May we long to see the face of Christ. And may we do what we can to help others see the face of Christ. And may the song of our everyday living proclaim God's favor for all the world. Amen. As we learn to sing God's song together, let us move into this time of prayer. And when you call for me, I have already answered. God of love, you are the one who makes all things new. New stars, new dust, new life. And so take our hearts, every hardened edge and measured beat, and create something new in each one of us. For we need your newness, O oh God. The rough parts of each of us made smooth, the stagnant stirred, the stuck freed, the unkind forgiven and then by the power of your spirit we need to be turned toward love again and so be with us today as we transform ourselves and when you call for me i have already answered Oh God, we join our hearts with your heart this day, offering up prayers for our world. For those who experience war, bring your peace. For those who hunger and thirst, fill them and nourish them. For those who live in fear, bring them comfort. For those who suffer from hateful hearts and actions, calm the storms around them. And we pause now to lift up to you those people and places that are on our hearts today. And now we lift up to you this adapted version of the Lord's Prayer as we pray together. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Mother, holy and blessed is your true name. We pray for your reign of peace to come. We pray that your good will be done. Let heaven and earth become one. Give us this day the bread we need. Give it to those who have none. Let forgiveness flow like a river between us, from each one to each one. Lead us to holy innocence beyond the evil of our days. Come swiftly, Mother, Father, come, for yours is the power and the glory and the mercy. Forever your name is all in one. Amen. Will you let 
distract or scare. Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blind and see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen? And admit to what I mean in you and you in me. Will you love the you you hide if I but call your name? Will you quell the fear inside and never be the same? Will you use the faith you found to reshape the world around? sight and touch and sound in you and you in me. Christ, your summit echoes through when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go, where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and Just a few uh, quick announcements before we close our service of worship today. If you're catching this on the day of our release, there's a couple of things uh, happening today. The first is uh, we have Coffee Fellowship via Zoom happening from 11 a.m. this morning to 11.30. I, I hope you'll consider joining us if you're watching this before that happens. You can find details on how to, to connect to that Zoom call uh, through your inbox uh, if you subscribe to our e-newsletter, which comes out each and every Friday. If you don't do that, you can send us a message, go on to our website and uh, scroll to the bottom of that first page, enter your email and sign up for uh, receiving e-news on a weekly basis. Also happening uh, later today, early this afternoon, we do have a, a congregational meeting that is specifically for the purposes of, of bringing uh, two members uh, into the fold as, as trustees with the church. And so once again, uh, there's information in your e-news if you're a member of the congregation and uh, you, you won't want to forget to, to join us uh, for that time. Uh, there'll be some more information as we move forward here, but this isn't a congregational meeting or annual meeting. It's just simply a meeting uh, to appoint two trustees to our board of trustees. Palm Sunday is, is next Sunday. And so in addition to our regularly scheduled Sunday morning uh, service that will happen next week, we've also rescheduled uh, our uh, Zoom presentation with Sila Joshua. You may remember from a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation with Sila, member of the Riverside Community of Faith uh, that is from South Sudan and traveled there last year and had some amazing and powerful uh, stories and images to share with us. We've rescheduled that time. It was supposed to be last Sunday. It's going to be next Sunday, 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon via Zoom. Um, so I hope you'll consider joining us for that. If you have any questions, let us know, but we'll send out some information on that. And also stay tuned for some more specific information as we enter into Holy Week next week. There'll be information about some services that will go out uh, to the congregation via email. So once again, you'll want to make sure that you're on our e-newsletter list. But friends, as we conclude our service today, I pray that you may see Jesus through your everyday living, and that the song of faith that Jesus sang to all the world and that his followers continue to sing today, may you hear that as a song of love, and may it penetrate into your very living that you might sing those words out to the rest of the world. Friends, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of God's Spirit. Go now in peace. Amen.